the last time I was not for an episode 3 of season 1 of Owen Murders in the Building. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it, it got a bit too comical. <laughs> it means we actually followed up Howard as the prime suspect and now a dog's dead. It's just, oh my god. <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm actually struggling to think of what my burning question is going to be for World at the end. At the end. Oh my god. Right. So. Okay. I did wonder when we got or we had the uh, the recap. I was wondering why they still mention about how the dead cat. And I've watched enough telly to know by now. When women mention a recap, chances are it's going to get brought up in the next episode. And yet here we are. So yeah. So basically. This episode was basically about how well do you know your neighbours. Now, for me, nothing at all. I, mean, I did mention, I did mention last week, I, but I was just now. If I was being murdered, on my, in my neighbourhood, and I'm, hood, and have all the neighbours, they're now slagging me off. I'm not sure I feel about that. Um, just because I didn't bother to know them, I'd be like, I keep to myself. What's your problem? Um. So our trio seemed convinced that it is somebody in the building and I just didn't, I mean I said on the last show, I said how I'm not really convinced it is somebody in the building because obviously what we learned about the backstory between uh, Tim and Mabel a lot on the last episode. So I'm still, I'm pretty much 50-50 but for now because I've not got much to go on, I'll just go along with it. Yeah, okay, it's somebody in the building, right, let's get all the neighbours, oh, I love Charles's um, attempt at mug shots and how oh I, I had to do it selfies in case it didn't look suspicious because <laughs> I would point out why would Sting be a murder suspect wow you wouldn't wow hindsight all about hindsight <laughs> but, I saw that, but I love him you know like I say I don't want to be too suspicious of him but I'm like okay yeah but I don't know anyway. Be aware I still am struggling to see him as somebody who's really into all this murder mystery stuff. Because he's too more focused on the theatrics. He's too. Fo oh, I can't believe I'm saying that. Me, a theatre lover. I can't believe I'm saying somebody's too focused on the theatrics. But you get what I mean? He's too focused on, you know, how he can sell this. You know, how can I make this into a war warning podcast? You know, um, how can I then maybe do a tour with it? You know? And with that little dream sequence where you had all pretty much all the neighbours literally be like murdered the suspects like a like, like parade. Um you get them in detective shows for this one. Right, who do you keep maybe point any out as the murder? No. Uh it just felt a little bit cringy, a bit too O T T. Um especially when you don't got Bonnie try to be like, pay your bills. Oliver, pay your fucking bills! And I'm, even, and I'm like, wait, what, what, what's going on? But she said, it's a musical, right? And, he, and he's like, well, yeah, but I'm like, no. Nah. No, nah. no. Bonnie, it's not Chicago. <laughs> well, I could, actually, I could imagine all the neighbours actually doing their own uh, business of the cell block tango! <laughs> anyway, never mind. Um, yeah, so Arbor's really t still is just too focused on the podcast side of it. I mean, he even goes a bit with his old friends to tr try and convince him to go, would you like to maybe sponsor me for, say, oh, I don't know, a small lump of $50,000? I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Most sponsorship deals probably wouldn't, wouldn't even pay a thousand to start off with. You probably look maybe, maybe, you probably maybe look at maybe like a couple, a couple hundred quid. Then depending on how well it goes, so then maybe up, up and up and up it. And normally with sponsorship deals, it means that you have to record ads for the sponsor, for the people that are sponsoring you. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we really, I mean, they really are trying to make us feel for Arba, like how he's down, he's downtrodden and he's not got, he's pretty much broke. Bonnie's on his ass. They're not in that sense. They established that last week, being a horrible picture for either of them. But yeah, I mean, she's constantly eyes on about paying the fucking bills. Um, yeah. So I really loved how he and Charles had that little heart to heart towards the end of the episode, which then kind of, I thought was really sweet, which then kind of, because for two reasons, A, it meant we learned a bit more about the two, about, about the two characters. 
which would not get it with Mabel. But B, it also meant that Oliver got the doc courage he needed to basically go to his, his friend Tony and say, Right, I really think that we've got something here. And I just, okay, and um, by the way, the sponsorship pri price is now $35. Way to go, Oliver. Get him on Dragon's Den. <laughs> Woohoo. Yeah. Um, but it does go a little bit too far, though, because he's already published the first episode. Without Charles, I'm able to say so. And they've only, and they've only got four listeners. Yeah. And I share Charles and Mabel's sentiment here. I'm fucking worried. Okay. But before we get back to Oliver and the, the hindsight and the, uh, and the dog, I'm going to focus more obviously, obviously on obviously the stiff, you know, what was it? Good, the good cop, bad cop routine? More like... Um, guarded cop and amateur cop because basically all the basically just leaves Mabel and Charles to be the ones to have to go and inter go and question Howard without him realising it's being recorded so obviously we've got so many data protection laws these days now you can't just just go to somebody's house have a mic have a um, a wire on and just record everything they say it doesn't work like that um yeah, and I think it was pretty how the list how they like basically go right. Charles like right, I'm gonna take it, and I'm like whoa. I thought like, Mabel's like whoa, seriously. And Charles like well, because I'm an actor, I can, and I can really, and I can, I can lay on the charm. And I'm, and I'm like, Ugh. and then oh lo and behold, look, it's another neighbour. And, and just straight away, Charles was like smoothing with her, like they love Mabel. I and Mabel's just like, Pff. I'm like Mabel. I'm like, do you do you want to be left alone? You will get Jiggy in the lift. <laughs> you know, because that's where it's going. That's where it's going here. Okay, so do you, do you, do you want to be left alone? Shall I just press the broken lift sign on the way out? The button that breaks the lift. Shall I just press that? Well, you, can have, you can have, what, maybe like half an hour? 35 minutes tops, maybe? So it was a bit... But I was a bit like, where's the bucket, you know? A bit sick, sick, awful sick, you know. No, but it's basically Charles gonna try and prove his point, and I'm like, ugh. So I just let my mother maybe just take the piss with me. So they go into Howard's flat because basically they decide, right, Howard's our prime suspect, we need to question Howard. And it gets really, really awkward like, literally awkward. I mean, for starters, Howard's not taking the grieving process well. Now, I'm not an animal lover, okay? I can't stand, I do not like animals. So I've got no sympathy for somebody. And I didn't have it in the last one either. So I've got no sympathy for somebody who's moping about their dead pussy. I've not got any sympathy, okay? I, if you, so if you're somebody that's still moping two weeks later over a dead animal, I'm like, mate, slap, shut, yeah, slap the fuck out of it, all right? Go and get laid, do something, you know. So yeah, so if you are, so if you are an animal lover and your lovely animal dies, don't come to me to be the shoulder to cry on, because you will just get slapped in the face. It will be like, no, that will shock you. Yeah. So yeah, it already felt it already felt creepy because Howard's just left things low lying around. They mean anything? Oh, you got another cat? It's like no, no. It's just if I leave it as it is, it's like she's not gone away. And I'm like, oh. It gets even more creepy because he's got pictures of his cats that are on that he's had on his wall, and that's where Charles decides to do this, this subtle. Oh, it's like you're being recorded. And I'm like, even I'm not buying that, you know. And Howard's like, wait, what, what, what? Why did you say it like that? And I'm like, yes, Charles. Why did you just say it like that? And he's like, well, well, because obviously they're watching over you. So in a way, it's like you're being recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Charles, no, nobody's buying that. He's not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm pretty sure Mabel's not buying it either. Yeah. Because actually, it was going quite well because Mabel took the lead. It was going quite well. 
and then it all kind of spiraled the minute Charles started opening up his mouth. You could tell it was just going, it was going badly wrong. And then it gets even worse when Charles just starts, you know, fumbling all, all, all over the place. And then they obviously find, you know, the, the prince. And then that immediately is when everything gets all completely, completely bizarre. Because it can't. Now, this sequence then happened really, really fast. I had no idea what was going on. I couldn't tell what was going on. Oh, I thought, has Charles just done some? Because I thought, right, has Charles just literally done something to him? Has he just hurt himself? Because you could hear Bill go, ice, ice, ice. And I'm like, what is going on? It's like, you're taking too long. You can just hear Bill in the background. It's like, what is going on here? Who's hurt themselves? But it turns out, when Charles eventually comes back in, it turns out that Howard had fainted because he has, does not like the sight of blood. Don't blame him. Okay. So apparently he's got this condition where he faints at the mere sight of it. And Charles is like, oh, well that... Oh, so that would mean you wouldn't want to be anything after doing some murdering, would you? It wouldn't be the scene during a murder. So straight away, they can rule out it's not Howard. I could have told you that lot last week. I could have told you the lot. And then the last episode wasn't Howard. I mean, did, let's face it. Did Howard look like the kind of face all we saw last week during the um, memorial, you can call it that. Did Howard look the type of guy who could murder somebody? No. So, what a waste. I mean, of all the potential suspects. If they're convincing somebody in the building of all the potential suspects, the first one I was going to would be the woman who wants the extra, extra space. That's who I'd go for first. I can't remember her name now. That's who I'd go for first. Not Howard. Howard's the last person to go. Person, you think. Howard is the person you would go to last when all the other suspects have been, have been, um, proven. Okay? Howard's the last person you go to on the list. Not the first one. Oh, my word. And what was even more, what made it even more disgusting creepy is that Howard had a dead cat in his fridge. Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 And what was worse is later on when, when Charles had that little heart heart armor, he actually had one of the, one of the, one of the foot with him. I'm like, ah! 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 Oh! I actually did wretch at that. Oh! Why? Burn it! Oh! Oh my god, who does this? Who does this? I mean, I've heard, I mean, I know tax a dummy to thing. That, is, that alone should be illegal. But, honestly, leaving the dead animal's remains in the fridge. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh my god. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it all now. I literally have seen it all. Oh my bloody god. Wow, okay. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh god, right, I'm gonna be sick. Right. I'm actually gonna be sick. Oh my god. Um Right. That's yeah, so Howard out. It ain't Howard. Okay. That is Well I pretty much I pretty much knew that. If if I if I knew it wasn't Howard, surely they should have known how to start it. You wasted an entire episode on the least likely person to commit the crime. Anyway, why do I feel like for the for the rest of the way we're gonna have random leads that, that they just explore and it turns out to be a complete dud? That's why I feel it's going at the moment, you know. Anyway, um, anything we'll mention before we get to the dog? Oh, yes, Mabel with uh, because she mentioned it was it only mentioned established that Oscar was getting out soon, um. And Mabel actually uh, went to go and see somebody. Um, and he basically basically turned her away. She was like, no, don't. He was like, no, he needs to, to make a fresh start. Please don't come bother us again. So I'm like, oh, right. So this is, I'm, I'm getting really more interested in this rather than the shenanigans. Um, but yeah, 
yeah, so, ooh. So we got a little, little, we got a little detail there, a little detail there, but not much more to go on to it. Right, let's get to the dog. Right. So, and this kind of felt at the beginning kind of felt funny, because obviously at the beginning of the episode, all the aura mentioned Steve. And Charles said, oh, I love him, and I want to get a selfie with him. Okay. Should be a little funny little reference, you know, a little funny little gag we forget about not long after the scene. So we go to the episode, almost in the lift, he's got this dog with him. Now I don't think if we knew that Oliver had a dog beforehand, but, but we do now. What dog in the lift? And who should be next to him in the lift? But Sting. And Sting's like, get that, get that dog away from me. I'm like, Sting. If any animals near me, get that fucker away. But as I just mentioned, I don't like animals. So I would be like, get that mangy mutt away from me. But the dog, but the dog, it just keeps sniffing around near Sting. I'm like, what, what is, what, why does it keep doing it? I mean, because you, you, you can see his thing says, oh, but con control your dog. Um, but I was like, just like, ah, 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 because it's like, oh, it's a big celebrity. <laughs> so, oh, Starstruck. It's like, you're just like oh, I'm just like, oh, can we get out of this straight away? Can we just move quickly on? Um, but yeah, because the dog, it's just, I just, uh. <laughs> oh, my word. Because the dog keeps sniffing this thing. I'm like, what's the dog's point? Because obviously, you know, Dogs are better at sniffing things out than us humans. You know, that kind of you know, that kind of push got to sniff dogs, they're sniffing for drugs. So the dog, because dogs have got better, better senses more than we have. So if something's a muck, a dog's gonna spot it a mile away before we are. So I'm, so I'm now thinking, oh, is there something we should? What, what is this? Has Sting been, has Sting been doing something naughty? See, see, is it drugs? Is it drugs? Something's up. And then you go back into the father's apartment and the dog is literally now I'm not sure if it's now I'm not sure if it's dying I don't want to speculate because I've got a nasty feeling the next episode is going to be focused on, on Arba's dog and Arba basically going after Sting so I'm not going to speculate this now okay but I'm gonna just break up it. So yeah, so the dog's literally kind of, you know, making some really not pleasant sounds, which I'm suggesting means that something's happened to the to the dog. And all of the has put two and two together for, oh my god, someone's poisoned my dog. And it's like, it's really not pleasant either. The, the camera actually zooms right in on the dog, and, and it's like, oh my, oh my god, the RSP says gonna feel there with that. Oh my word! Yeah, so yeah, it's it's it, it's actually not pretty to watch. And I'm now thinking, ooh. And unsurprisingly, you have the last shot be Sting basically singing, Don't get close to me. Don't get close to me. I'm like, is this some weird for is this some weird hindsight? Was this some weird foreshadowing? Was this some weird hindsight? I'm like, so, ah, uh, so, basically, Sting has gone from, this is, this is quite, quite, low, well, it's not funny, but the funny thing is about it, all, the whole thing is, Sting has gone from being a funny gag at the start of the episode, to now being the new prime suspect, in the space of 35 minutes, wow, 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 wow. okay, wow, so, yeah, I mean, wow, this guy kind of felt a bit of a slow episode for me. It was like, where was it? It, it, it took a while for the action to get in. And then when it did, it kind of got a bit too comedy caper. You know, it was like, what was going on? It just felt. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. So, what we can take away from the episode is this we can rule out Howard. It is not Howard. Howard's got some issues. Okay. But he's not a murderer. Let's just leave it at that. And I'd recommend Howard go and see a, 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 somebody because um, he clearly has got some issues. I mean, who does that? Putting a dead cat in your fridge. Oh. Oh. No. 
Oh god, the sticks feel sticky again. Oh my god. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what is my burning question at the end of the episode. Because we pretty much come to the end, end of my thoughts. I was, uh, it was alright, but I just feel a bit too bit of a cobbly side. Um because like I said, I were trying to have at the end of each episode, I was trying to have a burning question to ponder on. Ah, you know, and then to, and then to see if it gets answered in the, in the next one or it doesn't get answered in the next one. So far they've not been answered, but hey ho, it's a nice little bit of fun we can do. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Hmm. Well, actually, no, my burning question actually from the episode one did get referenced because, you know, because then in the first episode, my burning question for episode one was, who is Tim's fiance? And they did reference it because Mabel did say, oh, could the fiance and the killer be one and the same? So, hmm, I don't thought about that. Maybe, maybe. Maybe the fiance found out that Tim's actually a wrong one and done some things that are bad and thought, right, I can't marry this guy, so I'm going to murder him instead. You could just throw the ring back in his face. Be a lot less painful, though. Wow. It's not, it's not a cr criminal, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to think. Right. Okay. I feel, yes. I've got it. Here's going to be my burning question for this episode. What happened to Arbor's dog? That is going to be my burning question for this episode. Because I've got, an, I've got a feeling that we're going to spend the next episode focusing on the dog and what happened. Because Arbor's going to go, Sting kill, try to kill my dog. Well, oh, I'm already speculating, spe am I? Because we don't, we don't know the dog's dead. I mean, we can see the dog was literally in pain, but we don't know if the dog's actually dead or not. I'm hoping the dog's not dead, because, oh, my God, because this is going to be a very stupid murderer. Bonk a human off, then we'll go, right, cat, dog. What's going to be next? Rabbit? Oh, uh, anyway, it's getting a bit creepy. It's getting a bit sort of bizarre now. You don't start murdering a human and go, right, now I'm going to murder a pussy cat. Then I'm going to murder a dog. No. You do the, the animals first, then work you out to the human. I'm just, I'm saying. But, you know. So, yeah. So, that is going to be my burning question for the end of the episode. Is, what has happened to Arbor's dog? <laughs>